Hello guys, thank you guys so much for coming back to my channel. As I always say, good morning, good afternoon, and or good night. Whenever you are finding the time in your busy schedule to come back to my channel, I do appreciate it. Um, I am so excited about this video, as I am all my videos. Um, but in today's video, I wanted to talk with you guys about my top five things that I have learned since budgeting and being really like strict on our financial planning and just really owning in on every little dollar that we make and how we plan for that. So five of my top things that I have learned in only these two short months that I have really been super diligent on, um, like I said, making sure that we are capitalizing on every single dollar that comes into this house. So if you are new to this channel, do not forget to hit the subscribe button. As a matter of fact, go ahead and do that right now. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you do not miss any of my upcoming videos on this channel. I love to talk about anything that has to do with planning and organization and keeping your life together. Okay, getting your life. So uh, let's get to the video though. Um, number one, budget gives you life and if you see me stick, uh, looking down that's because I am referencing some notes that I went ahead and wrote down ahead of the video because I wanted to be on point so number one your budget gives you life and not restrictions yes the B word yes the big B word, budget. I know people hate budgeting. They hate sitting down to talk about their finances. It's like talking about politics nowadays. Don't nobody want to talk about where their finances are. And I don't blame you. But that's because there's a fear that's set up that is making you do that, which you need to totally knock out. And guys, sit tight. I'm going to grab my charger because my computer is about to die. All right, guys. So back at it. Like I was saying, your budget gives you life and not restrictions. Okay. And what I mean by that is when you sit down and when you and your hubby or your wife or your significant other or just you by yourself, because you can do this by yourself as well. When you sit down and you grab your planner or your notepad, you don't even need to be fancy and go buy a, a super fancy planner, but you just sit down and you write out every single dollar that is coming into your household. And then in the next column, you write down every single dollar that has to go out to feed your family to keep the lights and the water and the gas on to keep a roof over your head and to keep the wheels going for you guys to get to point a to point b when you sit down and you figure out what's coming in versus going out and then you can see where your money is going and then you can also see how much money you may have left after that paycheck if you are making a little bit more than what your um needs are it gives you life because you're able to visually see and, and you know, look at it on the paper as to where your money is going. There have been times, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one, where I've gotten paid on Friday and come, come Monday, I'm like, oh my, where did my money go? What did I buy? But now that I'm able to sit down and write down exactly what we're spending, uh, what's coming in and what we're spending, we know where the money is going, number one. Number two, we know what to put in savings, we know what to pay off debt with, we know what to, you know, sinking funds. If you want to know more about sinking funds, I will link a video that I did in the description box. But it gives you so much life. Cash has so much power, and I'm going to get to that in my next thing that I've learned. Cash rules. Cash rules everything, okay? It just does and when you're able to know where your cash is going it gives you life and everybody needs to get their life number two cash is king I can't say it enough since I have been carrying my cash envelopes and I've been following Dave Ramsey and I've been doing the cash envelope system it has given me so much control and so much power over my spending um my budget is giving me control over being able to negotiate with people because think about it. If you have cash on, if you go on, I'm just going to take, if you go on to buy a car, for example, and you walk in there, let's say you're budgeting to buy a $12,000 car and you walk in with $11,000, I can almost guarantee you nine times out of 10, you are going to walk out with that car. Because cash rules. You're not trying to finance. You're not trying to put something on a credit card. You're not trying to do anything. You're walking in with hardcore cash. Do you see what I'm saying? Cash rules. Money rules. Cash. There's something about the... And then there's something about the emotion that is attached to giving someone cash for something versus giving someone your card. You know, 
Uh, I love Dave Ramsey. I've been following him now, and I just I'm so addicted. But he gave the example of you know. If, you're, if your spouse or significant other is really having a hard time getting on board with the program, you know, lay out 20, uh, four $20 bills or five $20 bills. It's $100. Lay that out in front of that person. Also, lay out the debit card or the credit card next to them, next to the bills. Now, give it to that person and then ask them to give you the cash back. They are going, there are some, there are some um, stimulants in the brain that are going to be, um, Notified is the only word that's coming to my mind right now, but that are going to be charged, I should say, that you feel the emotional disconnection when you have to give someone, um, or connection, I should say, when you have to give someone money, cash money, versus using your card. Cash is king. Cash will always rule. It has always ruled, and it is true. It There is an emotional tie to when you have to go into a store. I, I can testify to this myself. While well, I have been in the grocery store, I have my list. And you know, you see something new. I go, oh, we should try that this week. Okay, I'm going to pick this up. And you get to the register, and you're thinking like, wait, I only budgeted for this amount of groceries. You know what? Because It's something about that extra, I'm going to spend extra $4. I don't want to do it. Because I'm spending with cash. Cash is king. Number three, which leads me to my next one. Debt is dumb. There's no other way to look at it. Debt is dumb. <laughs> and I, you know, I have debt. My husband has debt. So we have debt together. It's dumb. It, you know, and I, I put it down to when I talk to my husband about it. I just, and just keeping it simple. There is something about owing somebody that just makes me feel like, Man, this is dumb. Why do we owe people? Why am I paying? You know, and I'm granted after this week, because come this upcoming Friday, we will have no more credit card debt in our home whatsoever. Thank you, God. Okay. Um, but we do have our car loans and then we have our student loans. Um, and then we have a few medical bills that we have to pay off, but that's going to like that. Uh, but the student loans, I kind of put that into like a separate category into my head because our parents, they were great. They did what they knew to do. You know, they raised us great. and they But they didn't save for our college educations. And I'm not knocking them for that. My husband and I, we sat in the dotted lines. We knew when we were taking out our student loans. We knew what we were getting ourselves into. But there's something about student loans that kind of makes me put, feel like, you know what? Okay, I did it. It wasn't the, it wasn't the best decision, but I'm going to work my way through that. But there's something about these car loans and these credit cards. That just ain't sitting right with your girl. Because I'm like, there's something so dumb to me about going into a store and using a credit card to buy, I don't know, any damn thing. <laughs> Excuse my language. Um, and then I got to go pay this pe these people back. And then if I don't make the bill before whatever date, you're going to charge me interest. That just is dumb. It just don't make sense to me. And I didn't, I never looked at it like that until now. I'm telling it just don't make it's like who came up with this idea was a genius because they got us they they got us <laughs> and it just it just amazes me and I'm like you know what come this Friday y'all I will not be a part of that statistic that is relying on credit cards because I no, it is it is like the dumbest thing to me now that I'm in it and I'm now that I'm taking care of it and I'm more aware of it it's like I will never ever get myself into this again I could talk a whole 20 minutes on number three debt is dumb but I'm not gonna do that <laughs> but that is just my mind is just like wow why did I do that and I'm so thankful that our credit card debt was never we never I think the highest I mean I think with all the cards together we tapped right at like 1800 um, because we were making our monthly payments. We were, and my husband and I, we always paid a little bit more, um, than was required. Like if it was a $25 payment, we paid 35 or whatever it was. So when we really started to own in on paying off our debt, we only had like, and I, and I say only, you know, we only had like $1,800 that we had to pay for the credit cards and we're down to the last one and it's like three fifty. So I'm, I'm okay with this. We're getting out of it. But that is dumb, y'all. Number four. No to the Joneses. I remember when I was little, my dad was a DJ. Um, and I remember the song. I can't remember all the words. But it was something, about, something like, keep it up with the Joneses. Um, 
you know, how many times, especially with social media, how many times have we gone online, you know, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, and either it's somebody we know or somebody we don't know, and we see the life that they're living, and all we can think about is, man, I want to do that. Man, I want to do that. Man, I want to go on that trip. Man, I want to, you know, buy that car. Man, I want that bag. Man, I want those red bottoms. How many times have we done that? Also, how many times have we been around our friends who maybe buying or living a little above their means and you know they are um but because you hang around them you know and your friends say a lot about you i just throw it out there too but um you feel the need to up your status or up your game and buy something that you may not need basically you're just buying stuff to please people who probably don't even like you when you probably don't even really care for them. You probably have never even broken bread with the people. But. <laughs> which there's a lot. But you feel the need to always show up and show out in front of them or around them. Keeping up with the Joneses basically. Yeah. Don't do that. Mm-mm, it ain't even worth it. You know what? Um, <laughs> when my husband and I planned our wedding. There were so many things as a bride. You know. Oh my God, that I was like, I want this, I want that. You know, there was so many things, so many pretty, shiny, bright things that caught my eye. And my husband was just on the, he was like, okay, babe. But he was at the point in the wedding planning where he was like, whatever you want. (laughs) Because he was just like, let's just get through this. And I really had to have a come to Jesus moment. But I I think it was about three months because I had it where I wanted um, our backdrop. And if you don't know what a backdrop is, Google it for a wedding. I wanted a, we had our backdrop for our reception, but I wanted one also at the altar and I wanted all this other stuff. And and I really and I mean our wedding was beautiful. Our wedding was gorgeous. I can't believe <laughs> our wedding was beautiful. Our wedding was gorgeous. Actually we got um asked to submit photos to a company to 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 um to advertise. But anyway, um to have a come to Jesus moment and really ask myself who am I trying to impress really who are you trying to impress this is your wedding day this is only between you and your husband and this is bringing two families and because we are um my husband's Mexican I'm like this is bringing two families and two cultures together this has nothing to do with anybody else and if you think you do friend and you need to have a you need to have a, a you need to take a step back and I really had this, I trimmed off about a good $2,000 worth of stuff because I had that talk with myself and with God, like, what am I doing? And I mean, we, my husband would have been like on board and we cash flowed our wedding. So we didn't go into debt for it at all. And we weren't going to, but it was just the idea of, you mean to tell me I'm going to spend all this extra money just to please who? Because my mother wasn't asking us to do it. You know, if the moms would have been asking, that would have been different. And my husband wasn't asking for me to do it. I was just caught up in looking on Instagram and looking on Facebook and seeing and Pinterest and seeing all these other people, what they did. I was like, I want to do that too. So don't keep up with the Joneses. It's not even worth it. Nine times out of 10, you don't even know how they're paying for it. You don't, you know, you could see... Uh, it was one particular thing uh, that I saw when we were planning the wedding. And my husband just told me, he said, babe, you don't even know. They may be putting everything on credit cards. We're at least cash flowing our wedding. Don't get caught up. And he told me that. And I thank God that he told me that. Because I was so emotionally driven by, oh my God, it's, you know, my wedding and it's pretty. And it wasn't even worth it. So, number four, don't keep up with the Joneses. It's not even worth it. No. And number five, okay, guys, number five, don't believe the hype. Mm, mm, Don't believe the hype. Guys, I have been, once again, I have been watching all of these Dave Ramsey videos. And one, one, I think it was Friday or Thursday, brought me to tears. It was a couple. They were young. They were, I think they were younger than us. They had to, my husband is 38, I'm 34. I want to say they were 32, and maybe the husband was 35. She was 32, he was 35. But nevertheless, um, they paid, they were debt-free. They, they came on his show to do their debt-free scream, and they also had paid off their $150,000 home. And that just brought so much emotion, and it just gave me so much hope for our future. Um, because... To see that, 
And there's a young lady at my gym who doesn't have any, she just graduated from college two years ago. She doesn't have any student loans to see. And I was talking with her and we were, you know, I was sharing with her. She was sharing with me. And that, that type of energy is so good to be around because I grew up thinking that to get a car, you get a loan. You get a finance. You get a finance to buy a house. You have to have a loan. You have to have a mortgage. You know, when you become eighteen, you get credit cards. There's nothing wrong with having a credit card. You know, you 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 believe those things. I also thought that medical bills. You don't pay medical bills. I always and I'm a nurse. I'm a registered nurse, and I always thought if you get a medical bill, you don't have to pay that. They got to take care of you anyway when you come into the hospital. I actually thought that because working in a hospital, we can't deny you if you come to the emergency room. So, if you get stuck with a bill, you got, okay, it's a bill. It's going to wash away. I actually believe that. I actually believe that in order to really purchase a car, like the people that go on a lot to purchase a car with cash, oh, uh, you know, those are here and there people. They don't really exist. I didn't think you could purchase a home. I didn't really think, I thought those were like those people that live out in the boondocks somewhere. They're not on the grid. Don't do not believe the hype guys. There are so many people out here who are walking around who are self-made millionaires who don't have a mortgage who don't have a car payment and it's funny because my first my my um, very first car that I bought when I was 16 years old I remember I paid my car off and I thought I'm like where did that where did that intensity at 16 go? I was so innocent and I was so excited to have my first job and my parents were helping me. They only helped me with my insurance. I told my dad if he would pay my insurance, I would pay my car note. And I did, faithfully. And I paid my car off within like two years of having it. And it was my, my very first car. And I rolled that baby to the wheels fell off. But I guess, you know, becoming older and becoming more brainwashed with what society wants you to believe, you just think, oh, if I want a new car and if I want a a fancy car just go finance it nothing wrong with that no it is something wrong with that <laughs> there is something absolutely wrong with it because i it's the, the thing that's wrong with it you i go back to what i mentioned in point number one you owe somebody you know so am i really living you know how would life be making more money now than i was at 16 if i didn't have a payment going out the house to pay somebody and then they charging me interest on it you see what I'm saying? It's like, don't believe the hype. There are people walking on car lots, like I mentioned, when I said cash is king. If you walk on a car lot and you want a car that's $12,000, but you bring in an $11,000, I can almost bet you you're going to walk out with that car because you got cash. You're not, re you're not financing anything. You're not trading anything in, trying to add on to the balance because you want to, you're not doing none of that. You are walking in with hardcore cash. And there's something to be said about that. And there's something to be said about that person. So guys, just to recap, my five things that I have learned since being on a budget and planning and following Dave Ramsey. Budget, a budget gives you life and not restrictions. Cash is king. Number three, debt is dumb. Number four, say no to the Joneses. Joneses, just get them out your life. Don't pay them no mind. If you need to, if you, if it gets to the point where you need to unfollow somebody to save yourself, do it. End of story. And number five, don't believe the hype. Ah! All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining in on this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to thumbs up. And I will join you. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.